In this tutorial, I want to show you how you can get your Blood Angels painted for games of Warhammer 40,000. We'll go through all the different skills and techniques needed, starting with the basics, and then we'll move on to learning about creating definition, as well as how we can get your miniatures highlighted. This tutorial is an easy to follow along step by step guide, showing you everything you need to know, so by the end you'll have the confidence and knowledge to get your own Blood Angels painted. And if you stick around until the end, you'll see how we can paint our Blood Angels using contrast paints. Welcome to Tabletop.ready, my name is Michael and in this video I want to show you how to get some Blood Angels painted no matter your skill level and end up with some miniatures you can be really proud of. When you get your miniatures ready for painting, you can fully assemble them but if you want to make things a little easier then we can do sub-assemblies. This is going to allow us to get to places we wouldn't normally be able to get to whilst painting. I've also chosen to undercoat my miniatures using Mephiston Red Spray, but you can use whatever works best for you. Now we have everything built and undercoated, we can get started. But before we do that, I do want to thank the channel members and patrons who very generously support Tabletop Ready and make these tutorials possible. You can also support the channel and the content I make by giving the videos a like and leaving a comment. I really love hearing about your own hobby. As well, throughout the tutorial, all the paints and brushes I use will be shown on the screen as I use them, and I'll also link them in the video's description, along with any other equipment you see me using, with affiliate links to where you can get them. Finally, I've split the tutorial up into different chapters, so it's easier to follow along with, and the first place we're going to start is with the basics. In this first part of the tutorial, I want to show you the very basics of applying paint to our miniatures. This is often overlooked, but it's really important to create a good foundation for all the other techniques we use later. The best place to start when painting our miniatures is to get all your base colours painted first. This lets us spend time choosing what colours we want, and painting becomes less overwhelming as we've created a great starting point to work from. Let's start by painting the red armour of our Blood Angel and for this we want to mix an equal amount of Mephiston Red and Evilson Scarlet together. Once you have your mix, we're ready to apply it to our Blood Angel, and so we achieve best results we always want to make sure to thin your paints, and I find an equal amount of water does the trick. As well I like to remove excess paint from the brush on some paper towel first, which helps give us more control over how much paint is deposited. And when we're painting we want to keep our brush moving and avoid going over areas we've already painted, to prevent creating any unwanted texture whilst the paint is still drying. And once you're done, because we thinned our paint, you'll see it hasn't covered very well, so we'll need to paint another layer using the same process. Painting in multiple thin layers means we can get a strong base colour without losing any details. We just need to make sure each layer has fully dried first before applying another one. It's really important that we build up to a solid base colour first, because any shading and highlighting we do after this will contrast better and make more of an impact. When you're done with your first base colour, you'll have had enough practice, so let's work on getting all the base colours painted as well. The next colour we're going to be painting with is a bad and black, which we're first going to use on all the ribbed areas between the armour. And although we should try our best to be as neat as possible whilst painting, it's okay if we're not, because if you're like me, then you're going to be messy and make a few mistakes. Don't worry though, because we can always go back and neaten things up with either base colours. When you're done with the ribbed areas, we can use our Abaddon Black to paint our winged school decorations, belts and bolter casings as well. Finally, we want to get all our metallic colours done, starting with any silver details using iron hand steel, and these paints want to be thinned down and used in the same way as our other paints. If you have any gold details to paint, we can use Liberate Gold for our base colour. Honestly, working on getting all your base colours painted first is a great place to start for any new painters and beginners. This lets us practice the basics and it gives us experience with the brush. We've now gotten all of our base colours painted, making sure we've also tidied up any messy areas and mistakes. This gives us a great foundation to start learning and using other techniques. Even though we have all of our base colours painted, our Blood Angel is looking pretty flat. So let's see how we can create definition and some interest to bring out all of those details, helping our Blood Angel to make more of an impact. I first want to show you how we can make our armour more interesting to look at and break up those flatter areas using a glaze. We're going to be using corn red and to make it a glaze we want to thin the paint down more than we normally would 
with twice the amount of water. This is going to make the paint more transparent, helping to create smooth transitions. We're using this glaze around the lower legs, feet and anywhere else we think would look good. We want to apply the glaze in even thin layers to help any colours underneath to come through. As well we can build up the strength of a glaze applying multiple layers. Just make sure to let each layer fully dry first. If you feel you've overdone it, we can create another glaze with our Mephiston Red and Evil Sun's base colour mix and work this in the opposite direction to create a smoother transition between the colours. Glazing is one of my most favourite techniques and we shouldn't avoid it just because we believe we should be better at painting first. It's a very achievable skill with practice, even for beginners. Now we've made our flatter areas more interesting, it's time to create our definition and we can do this in a couple of different ways. The first way we can create definition is via the recess shade, which involves applying our paint or a shade directly into recesses and around details. Let's first do this for the armour using Galvor Back Red, which we still want to thin down like we normally would. Doing a recess shade is a more controlled way of creating definition than an overall wash, so we don't affect any base colours we may have already painted. Take your time doing this, and if you make any mistakes, it's okay to neaten up with our red base colour mix we started with. When that's done, hopefully you can see how this recess shade has helped to bring out all the details and panels of the armour. The other way to create definition is with an overall wash using a shade. For our Blood Angel armour, let's use Berserker Blood Shade. When using a shade, we want to use enough to cover an area comfortably, so we don't get too much pooling in areas we don't want it to. If you do see this happening, then we can remove excess shade we don't want using our brush. And once the shade is dried, you'll see how it's also helped to bring out the details, but you'll also notice how it's darkened our base colour as well. Using shades and washes are a great way to create definition without too much effort, but we do need to be mindful of how much we're using, as they can darken and dull any colour we use them over. It's really up to you which method you use, and how you want your miniatures to look. A recess shade is great for flatter, less detailed areas, whereas a shade is great for those areas with lots of smaller details. Another great place to use a shade is for all our metallic colours. For our silver details with painted iron hand steel, we can use null oil. And for any gold details you may have, we can use some right clean flesh shade. Once your shades have all dried, we can move on to the next part of the tutorial, where I'm going to teach you all about highlighting your miniatures. I now want to go through the process of highlighting our miniatures and the different stages of highlights we can do. And I'm going to go into some detail about this technique, as it can really make the difference and help elevate our miniatures. The idea behind highlighting is to bring out any edges, areas and raised details to draw our attention to them and to make these features stand out more. The most prominent way of highlighting, and the one we most associate with it, is the line highlight. And it's this highlight that we're going to be focusing on. For this technique, it's a great idea to have a brush you vibe with that you like to use and I will keep it separate so it's always up for the task when needed. Again we want to thin our paint and remove any excess on some paper towel first which is going to prevent those thick blobby lines. The first highlight we're going to do is called a chunky highlight and for this we use an Evil Sun Scarlet. This highlight wants to be quite a thick line so we can still see it once we've painted our finer highlights after this. Spend some time painting this highlight along any edges as well as on any raised details and areas. And once you're finished you should see how it's helped to bring out the shape and details of the armour. Our next highlight is called an edge highlight. I'm using Troll Slayer Orange and this is used on any edges and to continue bringing out any details. To make this easier we can angle our brush against an edge and run it along that edge to create the highlight. For the areas we can't do this then we just need to take our time painting thin lines where we want our highlights. For me highlighting has to be one of the most important techniques to really practice and get good at. Not only does it help to improve the look of our miniatures, but also helps to improve our brush control and hand-eye coordination, making us better miniature painters overall. Let's continue highlighting with the fine highlight using Tail Light Okra. This highlight is used to emphasise any areas and edges we want to be more prominent and eye-catching. The last highlight we can do is a spot highlight, using Ungor Flesh to paint little dots in all the corners of the armour where light would be more focused. And once you're done painting all the highlights, 
you'll be able to see what a difference it's made to our miniature. If you're not feeling confident enough yet for painting line highlights, then we can do a dry brush instead. Dry brushing is a method that's more often shown to beginner painters because it's a way to get those highlights with very little effort in a short amount of time. Using Troll Slayer Orange, let's first work the paint into the bristles of our brush and then we want to remove as much of that paint as you can until it's not coming off onto the paper towel anymore. This is going to help pick out those raised areas and edges more easily. When you're ready, you want to move your brush rapidly against the details you want to create highlights. What's happening is the paint is being deposited right onto the edges and raised areas and it's not being allowed to get into any of the shallower details. Even though dry brushing is quick and easy, it can look messy compared to our line highlights, but again it's whatever works best for you. I know highlighting can be a very daunting task, but I believe it's a very achievable skill with enough practice. And we also need to be okay with not being very good at it to start with, and it's going to take time before we can get really good at it. When you're ready, we can look at how we can get the other areas and details highlighted. For our rib details between the armour, let's first use Corvus Black for a chunky highlight to emphasise those curves. After that we can use Dawnstone to highlight those ridges, making them easier to see. Even though we have different details that are all black, we can help separate them using different colours to highlight. Our chest eagle is first going to have a chunky highlight painted using Eshin Grey, then Dawnstone for our ridge highlight. We can then finish with a spot highlight using Administratum Grey. Once we've done our chest decoration, we can highlight our bolter casings first with Dark Reaper for our chunky highlight, then from Risen Grey for an edge highlight. And finally, we can do our spot highlight using White Scar. The last details we need to highlight and finish are the metallic details. Starting with our silver details first, all we need to do is highlight them using Stormhouse Silver. Then once that's done, we can use an edge highlight on our gold details using Canoptech Alloy. Before we move on to the final section of this tutorial, let's see how we can add some final touches that are really going to add some character and interest to our Blood Angels. One of the details that are going to impress people if we do them well are the lenses of the helmet starting with Warpstone Glow. After that, paint a fine line along the bottom edge of each lens using Moot Green and then finish with a small dot of white scar in the top right corner of each lens to finish. The other thing we can do that is going to impress people is to paint little scuffs and scratches on our armour using Troll Slayer Orange. Take your time doing this and build up slowly until you're happy with how it looks. The other thing we want to make sure to do is to paint all of our rivets using Stormhouse Silver. It's a small thing, but it really adds character and interest. Finally, let's see how we can paint the iconic blood drop. We want to start with a dark base colour, which is going to be Galvor Back Red. After this, we want to get lighter towards the bottom, first with Mephiston Red, and then Evilson Scarlet. We're then going to paint a line around the edge of the blood drop using Troll Slayer Orange. Make this line lighter around the bottom edge using Talite Okra. Let's finish with some spot highlights, first with a dot of Ungor Flesh along the bottom, and then a couple of dots of White Scar towards the top. We should now have a better understanding of all the different techniques and steps we can use to get our Blood Angels painted. So now I want to finish up this tutorial, showing you how we can use what we've already learned, along with using some contrast paints. I want to finish up this tutorial showing you how we can use contrast paints, and what we've already learned as an alternative way to paint your Blood Angels. First of all we want to work from a lighter undercoat, here I've used White Scar. This is because contrast paints work better over lighter undercoats to take advantage of how they work, giving us our base colour and at the same time creating our definition. For our Blood Angel armour, we want to start with bowl red and we want to apply this as evenly as possible. And just like when we're painting our base colours, we want to avoid going over areas we've already applied the contrast and we want to use enough to cover areas comfortably. We don't need to thin our contrast paints, but I do recommend working from a dry palette so we can control how much we have on our brush. Take your time making sure we finish each area or detail before moving on to the next for best results as the contrast paint dries pretty quickly. I'm a huge fan of using the contrast paints. They're very versatile and they can also be used alongside the more traditional acrylic paints rather than instead of. This allows us to be more creative and achieve different effects. 
Once you're done applying the bold red contrast across all of the armor, you'll see it's not really given us that deep red we associate with Blood Angels and it doesn't really have a lot of definition. So let's apply a second coat, but this time with Blood Angels red contrast to achieve that deep rich red we want for our Blood Angels and this will also help create more definition as well. And when you're done we can then move on to getting all the other areas done. For the ribbed areas, chest decoration and bolter casings we can use Black Legion, applying this a second time if you think you need to. When you're done, we want to paint the metallic details the same way as earlier with Iron Hand Steel, creating the definition with some Null Oil. You could stop here and our Blood Angels will be ready for battle, but since we're now all experts, we can go even further and use what we've already learned throughout this tutorial. Let's first work on painting some edge highlights using Troll Slayer Orange. And then to really make an impact, we can go straight to using Towelite Okra for some spot highlights. Finish the armour using our Troll Slayer Orange to paint those scuffs and scratches. Adding these small details like the spot highlights and scratches are really what makes a difference in making your miniatures stand out more. For the ribbon and chest decoration, we can use our Dawnstone. And then Fenrisian Grey for the bolter casing. The last thing we need to do for our contrasted Blood Angel is to finish the lenses and this is easily done using White Scar to paint a line in the centre of each lens. We can then apply Warp Lightning into the recessed area to create a glow effect for our lenses. This has been a lot of fun and I've really enjoyed the task of showing you the different techniques and steps needed to get your Blood Angels painted. I especially enjoyed using contrast paint which we used to get a really great looking miniature. So let's see how they turned out. Before we see the reveal, I do want to say a massive thank you to The Old Tower, who has recently donated to the channel. Thank you so much. If you want to support the channel as well, and the content I make, then you can do that by becoming a channel member or joining the Patreon. Both give you early access to tutorials, and you'll be kept up to date with what I'm doing behind the scenes. Our Blood Angels are now finished and I hope I've been able to give you the confidence and knowledge to get your own painted. If you enjoyed this tutorial then let me know by leaving a like and let me know in the comments below. I've got plenty of other tutorials on the channel including dedicated videos to help you get your miniatures ready for painting as well as helping you get better at highlighting so make sure to go and check those out as well. I really enjoy making these tutorials and I hope you find them useful. Make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future content and I'll see you in the next video.